Hey, I have been gone for five months. Eh, no one probably noticed. You probably have other YouTubers to watch, but I'm the only one who... You know, just get on with the rest of the video. What is this? Unless you're into linguistics like I am, you probably have no idea what this is. By the end of the video, you'll at least know what it means. You might even learn what everything on it means. What's the IPA? Well, the IPA is the International Phonetic Alphabet, which was created by the International Phonetic Association, or the IPA. Yes, I know it's weird. If you want to learn the history of the IPA and the IPA that created it, you can watch Zinnaf's video called The IPA and the IPA that Created It. I'll link it in the description. So what actually is the IPA? Well, the IPA is an alphabet for linguists to communicate what sounds they're referring to. For example, say you're talking about the TH sound. In English, there are two different ones, the voiced dental fricative and the unvoiced dental fricative. If a letter is voiced, that means you just need to use your vocal cords to make that sound. The TH sound in think or thought is the unvoiced dental fricative because you don't need your voice to do it. The voiced dental fricative is the TH sound in the or that. Try to make that exact sound without using your voice. You can't, you'll just make the other TH sound. If you're looking for a sound, use it like a multiplication table. The blank squares are sounds that are possible but are not used in any known language. The shaded rectangles are sounds that are judged to be impossible. Now, why am I making a video about this? Well, I plan on making some linguistics videos because it's something that I have great interest in. And to make things easier, I plan on using the IPA to help describe sounds. All right, so I'll explain all of, well, this. First, there's a separate symbol for each sound. Second, when there's a slight variation or a different shade of the same sound, the same symbol is used. For the IPA, two things are different sounds when there is some language out there that differentiates between different words using only differences in those two sounds. Also, there are diacritics. Diacritics are small marks around a letter to change what it means. I don't expect you to memorize this stuff, this is just so you can be aware of it. Before I explain a lot of this stuff, I'm going to tell you something very important about the IPA. There are two different ways that the IPA can be used. There is narrow transcription, where you put what you're writing in between brackets, and a broad transcription, where you put it in between slashes. In narrow transcription, it tries to get the most out of the words, so you know exactly how people are saying it. In broad transcription, it just has to be close enough for your purposes, so if you're writing it for a different language and such. I might just make another video elaborating on this more, but for now, when using the IPA in videos, I plan to use broad transcription. Alright, I'll explain what all of these words mean. The very first thing I should say is that the characters on the right are voiced, you need your vocal cords to make the sound. The ones on the left are unvoiced, you don't need your vocal cords to make the sound. I'll start with these top words, what they mean. They're the place, so the part of your mouth where the sound takes place. They're put in order from the front of the mouth, your lips, to the back of your mouth, your glottis. There are large groupings of place. These are labial, meaning that they use the lips. These are coronal, meaning that they are articulated with the flexible part of the, the tongue. These are dorsal, meaning that they are articulated with the back of the tongue. These are laryngeal, meaning that they're primarily made with the larynx, your voice box. In this row, you have bilabial consonants. Bilabial consonants are consonants that are made using both lips. This second row are of the labia dental consonants. Labia dental consonants are the ones that are articulated with the lower lip and the upper teeth. Now we're on to the coronal consonants. Dental consonants are the ones that are articulated with the tongue against the upper teeth. Alveolar consonants are articulated with the tongue against or close to the superior alveolar ridge, which is here. Postalveolar consonants are the ones that are articulated with the tongue or touching the back of the alveolar ridge. Arctoflex consonants are where the tongue is flat, concave, or possibly curled shape, and is articulated between the alveolar ridge and the hard palate, which is the middle part of the roof of your mouth. Palatal consonants are articulated with the body of the tongue raised against a hard palate. Now, we have the dorsal consonants. Velar consonants are articulated with the back part of the tongue against the soft palate, the back part of the roof of your mouth. Uvulars are articulated with the back of the tongue against or near the uvula. Here, we have the laryngeal consonants. Pharyngeals are articulated primarily in the pharynx, or here. Glottals use the glottis as the primary articulation. We use the glottal stop in English a bit, for example, like in uh-oh, there's a glottal stop there. It's something English speakers don't really notice. Now, let's look at these words called the manner, because, well, it's the manner in which the sound is being made. Nasal consonants are, well, nasal. The best examples could be the voiced bilabial nasal, the M sound, and the alveolar nasal, or the N sound. Explosives block the vocal tracts so that all airflow ceases. Next, we have fricatives. Now, there are two kinds of fricatives, sibilant and non-sibilant fricatives. 
All fricatives are produced by forcing air through a narrow channel made by placing two articulators close to each other. When forming a sibilant fricative, one still is forcing air through a narrow channel, but the tongue is curled lengthwise to direct the air over the edge of the teeth as well. The S and Z sounds are the best examples of this. A non-sibilant fricative is any kind of fricative that is not sibilant, so basically a regular fricative, like the F or the V sound. An approximant involves the articulators approaching each other, but not narrowly enough, nor with enough articularity precision to create turbulent airflow. Approximants fall between fricatives and vowels, like the R sound in American English. A tap or flap is made with a singed contraction of the muscles so that one articulator is thrown against another. Trills are made by vibrations between our active articulator and passive articulators. This is most commonly seen in the trilled R sound. Here's what all of these sound like. Ba, ba, da, 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 ya, ya, ga, aga, ga, ga, a, ma, ma, na, na, nya, nga, nga, ra, 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 ba, ra, ra, fa, va, a, fa, a, va, tha. Tha, sa, za, sha, ja, sha, ja, xia, ya, ha, ga, ha, ra, ha, ra, ha, ha, asla, asla, wa, ra, ra, ya, ra, la, la, ya, wa. These were just the pulmonic consonants, and I'll get into the non-pulmonic consonants and vowels in a later video. As for diacritics, you might have to do your own research. This came out way later than I wanted it to. I tried to make a hurry video, I began to start editing, and I realized it wasn't good. Then school felt hard again, as it often does, so that happened. If possible, I'll try to make a video in the next two weeks.